In this tutorial video, we will be going through the feed through option in the tiling toolpaths using this example file here of a mantelpiece that has detailing on it using 3D models. So if we go to the job setup, we can see here that the width of the project is 72 inches and the height of the project is nine inches. In this tutorial video today, we want to set this up to be able to cut it on a 24 by 24 inch machine. So as we can see here, this 72 inch width is going to be too wide for the machine we are using. So we will need to use the tiling toolpath to allow us to feed the material through the machine to cut this project out. So if we click OK here, so now if we go over to the toolpath tab, we can see here that we already have a roughing and finishing toolpath. So I'm going to click this option so we can see the 2D view and 3D view at the same time. And if we select the roughing and 3D toolpaths here, go into the preview toolpath, we can now preview the cut that it will create. So now if we close the toolpath preview for this and go into the tile toolpaths option, as we are going to want to tile this toolpath. So we will need to select the option to tile the toolpaths. So we will need to select this option here. Now we do go through each of these options in the how to tile your 2D toolpath tutorial video where we use the individual tiles option. So if you would like more information on these options and how to use the individual tiles option, I would recommend watching that tutorial video first. But for this example, we will want to use the feed through in X example. When using this example, we need to make sure that we can move the material through the X axis and this won't be obstructed by any of the machine hardware. If on your machine you are using, you are unable to feed it through the X axis due to machine hardware, but are able to feed it through in the Y axis instead, you would need to use the feed through in Y option instead. And you would also need to edit the project so that the longest part of the material is along the Y axis instead of the X axis as it is in this project. And then for the next option we're going to do is the tile width size. So as we said, the machine that we are using is 24 by 24 inches. So we are going to use a tile width of 24. So if we update the tiles, you can see here that in the 2D view that we have tile one here, tile two and tile three. We currently have tile one selected as we can see this selected here and we can see this in the toolpath tiling manager here as the active tile. Now to change the active tile we can either select the option in the 2D view so for example if I double click on the T2 here you can see now that the active tile is tile two that we can also see here, or you can change the active tile by using the drop down option here and selecting the tile. So now we have made tile three the active tile. So if we go back to making tile one the active tile and run this as the toolpath preview. So if we select both the tools, you can see that in the 3D view, only the tile one toolpaths are showing. And then if we reset the preview and preview this visible toolpath, you can see that tile one has been cut. So if we were cutting this on the machine, we would have secured the material to the machine, setting the X, Y, zero position to this corner here, cut out this tile. And then once we had this tile cut, we'd need to remove the material from the machine, move it down 24 inches. So now that this corner would be in the X, Y, zero position, and then we'd need to cut tile two. So if we again show the tile two toolpaths and preview these toolpaths, so then it would cut the second toolpath. 
And again, for the last tile, we would need to remove the material again, feed it further through X, another 24 inches. So now that this part of the material here would be X, Y, zero on our machine. And then if we run those tool paths there, you can see that now all the tool paths have been cut. So if we reset this, now there is an option here to, for a tile overlap. Adding a tile overlap will allow the toolpath for that tile to overcut that amount into the next tile. You may want to use this option if the tool or toolpath you are using needs this to create a cleaner transition into the next toolpath cut. Otherwise, you may see that the toolpath isn't able to cut away enough material. Again, if you'd like more information on the tile overlap setting, I would recommend watching the how to tile 2D toolpath tutorial video where we go over this setting as well. For this example, as our machine's maximum cutting area is 24 inches, and this is currently what we have set for the tile, we wouldn't be able to add a tile overlap as it would go outside the work area of our machine. So we're going to leave this as zero. Another setting you might find useful is the draw toolpaths in original position for visualization. So currently we have this selected. So say we have tile two selected and we look at those toolpaths. You can see that the toolpaths in the 3D view are currently in the correct position for where it is related to the whole project. If we unselect this option, this will move the toolpaths closer to the X, Y, zero position, as this will be how the toolpaths are cut relative to the X, Y, zero position set on the machine. But this option is useful as you'll be able to see how these toolpaths are cut compared to the overall project. So now the next thing we're going to look at is looking at saving these toolpaths, as we have now got all the tiling toolpaths set up. So if we reset the preview and close this and go into the save toolpath option. So here you can see that we currently have the visible toolpaths to multiple files selected and to group where possible. We could use the group where possible option, but seeing as there's only two toolpaths that use different tools, I'm going to remove this option for now. And then here you will see the output tile toolpaths option. This is selected by default if you are creating a tiled project. Then you would need to select the correct post processor for the machine you are using. But for this, we are just using the Gerbil post processor as an example. So then we'll go here and click save toolpaths. So for this, I am going to change the file name and save the toolpaths here. So now if we look at the file we just saved these into, you can see here that we've got two toolpaths, a roughing and finishing toolpath for tile one, a roughing and finishing toolpath for tile two, and then the same for tile three. So when you come to run this on the machine, you'll want to run the tile one toolpaths first. So the two T1 toolpaths here, then you would want to remove the material and move it through the X axis 24 inches and secure the material back onto the machine. Run the tile two toolpaths, and then again, do the same, remove the material again, feed it through the machine 24 inches, secure the material back onto the machine, and then run the final tile three toolpaths. I hope you have found this tutorial video helpful where we have used the feed through and X option in the toolpath tiling to cut out this material that is longer than the machine we are using. As mentioned previously in the tutorial video, if you would like 
more information on the individual tile option for the toolpath tiling or would like more details on each option in the toolpath tiling manager, I would recommend watching the how to tile 2D toolpath tutorial video.